Yes, yes, yes. Um, welcome to Come Well to another episode, another doorway, another portal entitled <clears throat> Am I As As I Am As You Are. Um, today's episode. Uh, we're going to be touching upon the principles of body. So, today's title will be entitled, What is the Body? Um, <clears throat> I mean, everybody has one, right? We all have something called the body. Of course, you know what this, um, video cast is uh, primarily based upon. It's based upon the understanding of principles and or principality. Um, and like I said, my path at this moment in this body, in this live time, is based upon the understanding of principles um keeping a mind in relation with uh relationships or you know companionship what you call partners or a partner significant other a husband a wife married, engaged, so on and so on. Um, <clears throat> so that's what my spirit has told me to inform uh, through this specific informing or information through the channeling of principles. So I touch upon principles basically to, to veer the mind away or redirect it, its attention from being so personal and taking his personality so seriously. So that's why it's such upon principality to kind of redirect the attention of being so personal with one being so personal and so closely knit to their personality. Because once again, the personality is a made up created thing. Um, so I touch upon principle and principality to make things less emotionally heavy on one if they redirect their attention away from their personal aspects and their personality to the understanding of principality and principle. So today's topic, like I said, is um, titled, What is the Body? And... um I'm going to touch upon this. Of course, you already know how this video cast goes. Where I say line for line, doorway after doorway. And together we walk down this hallway. Okay. So, let's go to the first one. The first line and or doorway is the body. A transformation and conversion machine and or vehicle goes through different forms, energies, and images, turns substance and liquid when entering to the mouth into different textures and different colors when exiting out the body. The darkness or inner dark workings of the internal body is magical in the sense and understandings of energy conversion. You know, you want to, like I said, once again, I touch upon principle to uh, come out of your personal human lives for a few minutes and to get more deeper into yourself, to dive more into the interest of yourself, to be as immediate as possible, not so out there will be as local and be immediate as possible so we're diving into the body this is what the body is 
a transformation and conversion vehicle. It transforms things and it converts things into different textures and different colors. Um, and the inside, of course, it's a dark kind of working, in a dark working, an internal darkness that happens. You know, it turns things into other things and other things into other things and so on and so on and so on inside the body. So this is just a, um, a redirection of attention to if you find some kind of interest in the way this thing operates and functions and works. Um, this is a phenomenon. This is a anonymous reality which we all exist in. And the first reality you exist in is not life or these things around you or this atmosphere. It's this body is what you live in. You don't live in this house. This is the first house. The body is the first house. And basically the only house, literally the only house, ultimately the only house, primarily the only house. So you have to understand how this house works, how it functions. And naturally it should pull your attention and your interest into it. And the more things pull you, pull your attention and your interest into the immediate or the now or the moment or the live or the liveliness of the immediate, which is what you are, the more other things and human situations and your human problems and things of that nature doesn't seem as important anymore because now you're so engulfed and interested in this body or the spirit or the way this functions that's why i say it's a kind of redirection of attention you're so attentive on your day-to-day -day human life but do you know what you are in understanding a principle and just getting to find out and know what you are rather than who you are. If this path is meant for you, it's going to naturally redirect your attention into it. And the more you zoom in, the more you enhance something within you. Um, and that is a path within itself to go inside, to go internal, to be more innate, to be more insidious. There's nothing wrong with things so-called outside of you, like this hammock, like this chair, like this laptop, like this table, this chair, this glass, these stones. I'm not wearing these stones, these stones that are wearing me. Or oh, I'm not wearing the stones, I'm wearing the body. The body is wearing the stones. See, this is the whole understanding. So if you say, yo, what you wearing? I'm saying, well, I'm just wearing, you know, some stones, I'm wearing some, um, some chains, I'm wearing some clothes, a t-shirt, and shorts. That means that I have became subject to the body, which means I've, well, I became objective to the object, which is the body. But if you ask, yo, what you wearing? And I say, I'm wearing the body. It's a whole different kind of conversation. You say, nah, but you're wearing some clothes. You know I'm saying, you got some braces on, you got a ring on, you got chains on, you got this. I'm like, nah, I got nothing on. I'm wearing the body. The body is wearing chains. The body is wearing a ring. The body is wearing a bracelet. The body is wearing a t shirt. The body is wearing shorts. The body is wearing sandals. I'm not wearing it. So, this is a whole, just this one thing that I'm touching upon is a whole topic and reality in the world within itself. This can be an eight day conversation. Not eight minutes, eight hours. An eight day, eight months, eight year conversation, just this alone. 
So when you ask somebody what are you wearing, and they say a jacket or a red shirt or blue pants or blue jeans, or you know where they're coming from. So um, I don't want to dive too deep into this first line that we're touching upon this first doorway. But this is just an opening, like I said, I touched upon as far as this is a transformation, conversion, transforming, converting vehicle. That's what this thing is. It's a, it's a transforming, converting vehicle, dealing especially with uh, substance and liquids. As you see, you can drink lemonade and piss out something a different color. You can eat lettuce or vegetables or fruits and shit out something a different color and a different texture. And it's not the same texture as a pear, or it's not the same texture as an orange, or it's not the same texture as an apple or banana. It's a different kind of texture coming out the anal canal, the rectum, and a different kind of color, and a different kind of smell as well. So, there's something that goes on inside of this vehicle, this machine, called the body, that... um turns things into other things other than what it was when it first entered into it. So that alone, this first line, this first door, which should start to draw you in to pull your attention and redirect your attention into principle and go into principle mode from this point forward. Okay? So, um, like I said, it's mostly energy conversion. Um, any dark bottle, you have um, different uh, glass bottles that have dark colors like dark blue or dark green or just dark black glass. I would suggest and recommend you put your water, your juices, and whatever else in these dark bottles. Because there's something happening, some energy conversion or energy transformation going on inside of that dark bottle, which is the darkness of the body. Bottle body the same, they derive from the same origin. The bottle is a body, and the body is a bottle. And the liquids, what do you think is called the bottle with liquids inside of it, juice or water? Just like the body, most of it is composed of liquid. So, the more darker the body is, or the bottle is, the more energy conversion, the energy transformation, uh, and energy conversion, occurs and happens within that body or bottle or embodiment. Okay? Um, as we move along. Uh, the next line in our doorway is, it is a sensory machine and or sensory vehicle. It uses its sensory system, which are known as the five senses or the six senses and can sense things around itself and sometimes before things happen. And you have evidence of that, like hairs standing up, your gut feelings, things of that nature. Indicating something is near or about to take place or is presence. That will create an impact that, and that will create an impact in some way on and or in the physical system. Your being is antennal, if that is a word. Well, I coined it if it's not a word. Antennial. Um, your spine is an antenna alone, which is why your spine has to stand erect, has to be straight up. Um, walking upright. Because there's a something, it's aligned with something up there and down here. As far as space and gravity, gravity and space, there's a relationship between space and gravity, gravity and space. And you being that is the time. So gravity, space and time, time, gravity and space. There's a relation between all these different things that keep the spinal wreck or the antenna pointed upward, which is also uh, the understanding of it remaining grounded and pointing downward at the same time. So, um, your being is antennal, your spine is an antenna. The very tips or tippings of everything on your body, which is the fingertips, 
uh, which is the tips of the toes, you know, um, the tip of your nose, hair follicles, the tips of the hair follicles, or the hair follicle endings, the head of the penis, the tip of the clit. These are all basically antenna related. So you're a walking antenna. And what does an antenna do? An antenna picks up signals and waves, messages. So you either get a clear screen understanding or a screen full of static and confusion. Um, depending on how high or how extended your antenna is and where your antenna is pointing towards. Um, a metaphor for your mind. What is your attention on? What are you focusing on? What are you concentrating on? What is your path about? Um, what are you supposed to be getting? What are you supposed to be understanding? What are you supposed to be experiencing? And the more, sh the more aligned your antenna is, the more clearer the screen becomes for you and the more uh, easier you get a clear picture of what's really happening. You know, if your antenna is bent or it's broken, you know, anyway, you won't receive clear signals of this reality. So once again, this body, since it's surrounding the spine and the erection of the spine, and the alignment of the spine, it's surrounding a um, antenna, so to say. I think the bone, because the spine is the bone, the bone I think is called osseous tissue. So it's surrounding the osseous tissue, um, the osseous antenna. And it's picking up signals. So once again, this body is also an antenna, and it picks up signals. So the question is, what signal are you picking up? See, signal is also the word sign. You know, so what signs are you receiving? What signs are you envisioning? What signs are you getting? What signs are talking to you? Signs, shapes, colors, geometry. Uh, what is communicating to you? What are you communicating back to? What are you in dialogue with this reality? Okay, so um, this video, of course, is to come out of the um, mundane or physical or external understanding of just the body being arms, legs, hair, and skin color, and eyes, and teeth, and mouth. And to get more internal, more insidious, more innate to its innate function of operation um, from physical to energy to spiritual and so on and so on and so on okay all right um like i was saying before the tips of your fingers the tips of your toes the tips of the pins the tip of the clit the tip of the nose the tip of the hair follicle endings anything so anything symbolic of a tip means that it's it's going from something that has a full body into a tip and that very point of that tip goes into a whole nother reality which you can't fathom which is picking up signals and waves that uh you're supposed to be picking up for some reason according to your own path your own understanding your own experience so all these tips are a symbolic of a signal trying to be picked up. Uh, so just remain open to clear reception from any and every angle and all angles as much as possible, whenever possible. Okay. Um, next line in our doorway is it is an intake, outtake, outtake, intake machine and or vehicle. What I mean by that is inhaling and exhaling, the body, taking in to get rid of, ridding itself constantly for system neutralization and mutual operation. It counteracts and it polarizes. This is what this vehicle does. 
So it's an intake, outtake, outtake, intake, machine and or vehicle. So basically, let's let's erase the word body. Get the word body out of your mind. B O D Y. And let's define this thing and describe this thing for what it truly is and how it truly expresses itself in its truest nature. Um, it's time to call words or describe things or, or define things and explain things as it truly is, rather than these words that are connected to other words, but don't really get to the immediate uh, point of how it is and what it is. It's just a, a title or a label. But that title or label does not describe nothing. Saying the word body is different than saying the word intake. Saying the word body is different than saying the word conversion. Saying the word body is different than saying the word transformation. So I would suggest and recommend you start to redefine your reality according to how your reality is communicated to you. Um, be as clear as possible with your definitions and descriptions and explanations of what it means to you and of what it's doing. Regardless of what's, what, what's, what it is that you're trying to describe and explain and define. Um, so, you know, it's be clear and precise with uh, describing your reality as much as possible. Okay, and uh, take time to choose a a word which, when you mention that word, it brings something to mind. It actually defines what you're describing. The word itself. The word is not a uh, disguise of how something works. The word itself is the workings of how the thing works. Okay? Some practice of works in a while. Um, so the body is also something, is also something constantly ridding itself for system neutralization and mutual operation. It counteracts and polarizes. And you get a left and right body, the right counteracts the left, the left polarizes the right. You know, poisons are medicinal, medicinal is poison a certain way depending on how much you take. So it's a back and forth thing. You know, but it's constantly counteracting, constantly neutralizing itself to maintain a mutual balance within the middle. Okay? So this is also what this thing called B-O-D-Y is. The next line in Odoe is, it is a piece of equipment which relies on the connection and correspondence of inner and outer elements and gases in order to be and in order to do. So it relies on the connection and correspondence of inner and outer elements and gases. Um, so it's something that the inside relies on the outside, the outside relies on the inside. And this is a constant relationship that this uh, different sides or different polarities have with each other through the medium and middle of you, of your presence. So basically what's inside is outside. So you have this saying as above, so below, as within, so without. Um... Everything relies on each other. There's not one thing in existence without the other. So that's also what this B-O-D-Y thing uh, is as well, to keep in mind. Okay. Next line in our doorway is, it is a time capsule or time encapsulation and time encapsulation. The body is a product of time, the mind is a product of age. Age is not subject it's not subject to deterioration, only experience. And time is subject to deterioration and decomposition throughout a duration of time within an experience. So it's a time capsule. This is a time capsule. 
or a certain kind of form of time encapsulation. It's a capping. It's an envelope. It's something which is holding something inside, but something which is also deteriorating at the same time until this something inside releases itself through this time capsule when this time expires. Okay, so another way of understanding what the BLDY is, um, I guess it's a time capsule or time encapsulation of some sort. Um, the body is a product of time, the mind is a product of age. Age has nothing to do with numbers. Like you have the age of Pisces, the age of Aquarius, they're not talking about numbers, they're talking about a certain kind of, I guess you can say zeitgeist, a certain kind of spiritual movement of some sort, a certain kind of specific era in time. But the era in time is not out here, the era, the era in time is right here. The age is right here, the era is right here. How are you keeping yourself? Uh, spiritually. Energy-wise, mentally. So, this is what determines the aging of the different ages that we move into and shift into. Age, once again, has nothing to do with birthdays, birthday cakes, numbers. There's no such thing really even as old or young as well. The body just meets its point of expiration at some point and what you truly are which releases from the body doesn't get old it doesn't get young it's just something which is okay so if you were to say anything is going through something it's the body but what you truly are just is and it isn't going through much it's just it's it's, it's the existence of what you truly are and the body is the experience and the word experience is also related to the word expire that's why it's called an experience because this experience expires because it is external it is the body okay existence is something different existence is also related to the word exit you exit from this physical vehicle, but you remain within your spiritual existence or your anonymous existence or your phenomenal existence. Unfathomable in this human brain. Okay. The next line in our doorway is the body, if you were to say, is a certain kind of texture of light. Flexible light or light flexibility. It is a condensed light encoding. A condensed light encoding. We are light. We eat light. Fruits and vegetables. We drink light. Fruits and vegetables. We breathe light. Sunlight. Moonlight. Dark light or dark matter. So we breathe it, we consume it. People say, what do you mean you eat light and you drink light? How the hell do you eat light and drink light? Well, I say, the reason why I say fruits and vegetables is I say, well, what besides water and air and stuff like that and soil grows fruits and vegetables? It's sourced with sunlight and the moonlight, or what we know as sunlight and moonlight. So this light condenses it itself into this fruit or this vegetable which brings that bright nice what we call beautiful color to a fruit or a vegetable which means that that thing is light you think in light your thoughts and your images are light right now if you close your eyes and imagine something whatever you're imaging has a certain kind of light and color to it and animation as well if you want to put your mind into movement so you are light you drink light and you eat light and you breathe light you are light, eat light, drink light, breathe light. So we, this body is a certain kind of light condensation. It's condensed light or condenses the light of uh, what you truly are. It's condensed light. So that's another way of looking at this uh, BODY. 
to understand what this is. You can call it condensed light. You don't have to call it a body. You can call it, this is condensed light. If you can touch light and feel light, you can feel light because you can, matter of fact, even when I say that, you can feel temperature. You can feel heat. You can feel cool. You can feel cold. You can feel freezing. You can feel warm. You can feel scorching. You can feel these temperatures. Um, but can you actually feel light? Light um, is something which kind of plays an effect on the eyes and the pupil. But can you actually feel light? You can feel temperature, but can you feel light? You are light. This body is light. So if you would say, well, what does light feel like? Just touch your body. This is what light feels like. If you were to say, I want to feel light. This is what light feels like. So instead of calling this a body, B-O-D-Y, you can say, this is light. I don't have a body. I am condensed light, or I am light condensation. Um, and this light is composed and held together in the orchestration of elements and certain things dealing with the biosphere and biology from a surrounding of what we know as a certain kind of weight, if you were to say, of pressure. Okay. Um, the next light and or doorway is it is a puzzle and riddle, something which is in pieces and or parts, like body parts, something, a cold to crack, a soup to brew, a chemistry to formulate, or a formula to combinate from a kind of internal cultivation. Something to reconfigure, configure, and figure out. Something to reorganize and organize with a specific intent to reject or suspend from this thing into the understanding of spirituality. Um, going to different understandings of our ancestors. They seen this body as a jetpack, or they seen their self trying to eject from this physical jetpack. So this is why you have certain things like meditation, um, different things trying to conjure up different energies within this vehicle to release or eject or suspend from this physical vehicle. And to brew something, to soup something, to find the perfect formula to combinate this chemistry of biology, mind, intent, energy, and spirit. We were looking for the perfect formula to leave and release from this thing that we call a BODY at one time. So, this is where the whole understanding of and the origin of the mad sciences because science the word science is nothing but seance seance is a ceremony dealing with ritual um the ceremony deals with more dance and sounds and things of that nature the ritual is something to conduct um it's conducive it's uh to induct and then conduct Um, to bring about something. So we seen this as something to brew, to stew up. This is what we seen this body as. We didn't see it as ourselves. I didn't say, oh, this is me. We didn't say this is my identity. This is my ID. This is my personality. This is who I am. We didn't see it as that all the time. We seen this as an entrapping of some sort, like you're almost trapped in this body. I need to get out of this shit. I need to get out of this. I don't want to be in this because all it wants to do is have sex. It wants to eat. It wants to take a shower. It just wants to kill. It wants to survive. It's getting dirty. It's getting filthy. I don't like it. I don't want to be in it. How do, how do I get out of it? So we were trying the most 
the well, they might say the most wickedest things or taboo or dark demonic uh, formulas or just things we were doing, certain activities we were doing, just trying to find the key to open the lock to release ourselves from the bondage of this physical vehicle at one time. So that's why I said it's a puzzle, it's a riddle. You don't have to call it a B-O-D-Y or body. You can call this a puzzle or a riddle or a code to crack to release yourself from or suspend yourself from or reject from to some degree. So, once again, I'm just giving you more words, definitions, and descriptions of this vehicle, physical vehicle, which we want to call a body. But is it a body? And if it is a body, what the hell is a body? What is what this what is this thing that you call body? Because the word body, B-O-D-Y, these four letters don't describe or explain shit. It doesn't define anything. You know? According to language arts, you can say it's related to this word and not words related to this word and not words related to this word, like I can do with you in this video. But why don't we throw all these words away and just call it something or call it certain words which actually describe and define what it actually is and how it actually functions and operates? Why not? That's what I'm saying. Why not? Use your mind, utilize your path. Speak for clarity. Don't speak the same label and title and name that everybody else and everything else calls it. And use your own language. Discover your own unique terminology and vocabulary for what you're choosing to describe, for how you're choosing to describe and define your reality as most, you know, as, as most clear as possible. You're constantly looking for clarity. You're constantly seeking clarity of yourself and of this reality which you are currently experiencing. Okay? So keep this in mind and heart as you move along your path. Keep on. Next line in the doorway is It is an illusional manifesto being held in place, structure, posture, and geometry by a constant beat or beating beat wave pulse rhythm and vibration vibration equals manifestation the beat which keeps you complete but incomplete to deeply so the spirit can retreat or recede back to its protrudence So all that is saying is basically, it's a beat which keeps you complete. This heartbeat keeps this physical body present, which is why you're able to see me on this video because I have a heartbeat keeping things in a certain kind of order, structure, posture, and geometry in front of you from blood to organ to bone to skin. It's a presence to image in front of you. It's just the beat doing that. Because once the beat stops, once the heartbeat stops, the body begins to decompose and deteriorate and go through stages of rigor mortis. It starts to disappear. It starts to shrink. It starts to disintegrate back into the soil. If the beat isn't there, but as long as the beat is there, vibration equals manifestation. See, these are principles, once again, to keep in mind, if you want to manifest something, learn how to find the beat within, or the beating, beats within what you choose to manifest. Where is the heartbeat in what you have in mind or intent to manifest? And keep that heartbeat going, keep that intent going, keep that focus and that concentration going. Zoom in on what you want to manifest. So these are different understandings and understandings of how to work um, your inner workings. 
okay how to invoke and evoke certain energies as well to bring about for the uh intended <clears throat> okay so once again the body is an illusional manifesto so you don't have to call this a b-o-d-y you can call this a manifesto an illusional manifesto you can call this beat and vibration vibration and manifestation so you have a human body you have a body no i have a vibration and manifestation no i have a beat no it's a manifesto so like i said these different words are put in this format of language to bring about a different kind of perception and understanding of this physical vehicle which we call the body okay um next line and or doorway is uh it is a responsibility you are responsible you are responsible for the condition it stays in and you determine this condition value and usage this body is maintenance so you are a janitor you are a custodian without a job or a job title keeping this body up is maintenance within itself this is janitorial you're maintaining something certain way of eating certain way of thinking certain way of living or how to have your experience this is maintenance so it's a constant vehicle which needs constant maintenance all the time um so once again redirect your attention on this immediate self and enhance and open this be zoomed in and concentrated on this and enhance and expand your understanding and understanding of this immediate experience from the foundation of your existence not the foundation of your personality and your human history and human body and physical reality no from the foundation of your existence is where you build the structure of your physical experience but the spiritual existence builds the structure on the physical experience so existence and experience experience and existence are two totally different things the existence can have can create an experience and within the experience you're supposed to understand that you are truly just existence you get it okay so it is a responsibility is maintenance and it's a responsibility this is why you know one of the understandings of why you know is a god because every god has a responsibility the responsibility is this first and foremost not your family not this not your job not your career not your work none of this it is your individualness it is your body or your embodiment or your immediate you the i is your responsibility and the am is your maintenance the am is body i oh, pardon me i is body am is spirit so the am you know the i is one that needs maintenance and responsibility the am is the god which uh takes care of the maintenance and has the responsibility so the am is responsible for the I because the I is the identity the identity is a person the personality understand that's what the whole understanding of I am or am I uh, the origin of that understanding uh, derives from I is identity and personality which is human am is Amen or Amen Ra which is the God aspect or the unknown aspect okay so you pop up as an I in identity, body, personality, but the I has to get back to the end. And this is how you know that one is on their spiritual path in the physical form. But 
their main attention and redirection of attention is on the unphysical uh, phenomenon. Okay. Uh, the next line in Odori is the body is a slave to the mind and a worker for the spirit. Your body is your employee. It is your company. It is the thing which keeps you company. Your mind actually keeps you company. The body in a way as well, but your mind keeps you company in a certain way. Or your brain keeps you company. So this is not supposed to be, oh, this is me. You know, my skin color is this, or I am this, or I am that. I am this tall, I'm this age, old, I'm this old, I'm this young. And you're not supposed to be so closely, personally knit with this illusional vehicles with, or this illusional vehicle which expires at some point um so it's something which is a slave for you it's willing to do whatever you command it to do but if you think that you are it then that space or that gap is no longer present and you become personal with this illusional experience and the more that happens, the more human you actually become, the more physical you actually become, and you sight and focus of your true spiritual existence. Okay. Um, the next line in our doorway is, the body is a disguise or disguising thing. It is a mask and costume. A mask and costume. This is what the body is, the B O D Y thing is. With something unknown hiding inside the atom, or what they know or identify as an atom. So, whatever we truly are, are is something unknown. With something unknown, something anonymous, hiding inside what we know or identify as an atom. The atom hides inside the molecule, the molecule hides inside the compound, the compound hides inside the structure or the structure of body. What we truly are is something hiding inside and behind layers and layers, or hiding inside and behind dimensions and dimensions of different densities in the specific plane of existence. In order to have this human experience, take place and space in your existence and your experience whatever we truly are is compressed inside of an atmosphere of what we know as pressure so this is a constant disguising thing so what whatever you truly are whatever we truly are is something that is always wearing a mask and a costume we're constantly in disguise all the time unless we get that that statement hidden in plain sight we are hidden in plain sight like right now i'm on video my image is on video but when you look at this video and you see this image which i which you think i am i am not this image what i truly am is something hidden uh behind inside or beyond and or beyond or prior to this image so even this face, this image, is a certain kind of disguising. I'm hidden inside of this. I don't have a face or a body. Um, even the, the, the word face and head, face and head, head is related to the word hide, which is why you can't see your face. You can't see your head. And face is related to the word force. So head and face is actually the word hiding, hide and force, or the word face and head is actually related to the word force and hide. So the head and the face is actually a hiding force, or a force which is hiding, which is why none of you can see your face or your head. Can't see it. Just being right now in this moment and you're looking forward at whatever you're looking at for some reason you can't see your head or your face because it is a hiding force this is why I say be as much in touch with your immediate reality as much as possible because it is very unknown and very anonymous and it's very mysterious 
And the more you get into this, the more you start to zoom in more into this, and the more you zoom in more to your immediate moment, the more everything else becomes secondary. Your personality, your identity, your human life and human lifestyle becomes secondary and your immediateness or your immediate self becomes primary, becomes most important, most relevant. You know, so this is what you want to get into. And this is what this path is about. This is what this video is all this video and this video cast is about is to dive more into the unknown the anonymous aspect of the am or the self or the zero or the empty or the nothing that you truly are okay get more into that get more interested into that divert or redirect your attention into that immediate unknown knowing and um just by you giving being aware of it and acknowledging it and giving your attention to it it will blossom and flower and open up to an understanding which is tailor-made and perfectly fit for your understanding and your path of knowing yourself the self okay and nobody else can define or describe that for you but you for yourself because it is your experience your existence going through that experience and that experience will unfold um, perfectly um, with your understanding of it and one day maybe you can share with me okay uh, next line and or doorway is body BODY is a cooking mechanism it's a cooking mechanism an alchemical brewing that's brewed into an alchemical broth in order to supersede beyond the physical boundaries through the spirit and mind's intent. You are a jet trying to eject from the physical plane or physical vehicle using the functions of this physical vehicle but through the mind's intent and focus in order to eject, suspend, and depart from it. An opportunity, life is an opportunity to stir the soup for ultimate activation, radiation, and illumination. Once again, like I was saying before, um, the ancestral technology or ancient technology, we've seen this as a certain kind of soup to the perfect broth, the perfect stew to put together to eject and depart from this physical reality we were doing meditation breathing techniques standing in certain postures experiencing certain uh otherworldly out-of-body experiences um, looking at something put you into a trans a hypnotic state and things of that nature we were looking for all kind of formulas and all kind of activity and doings and workings to get out of this body we felt we were entrapped in this and a lot of understanding and writings on that is based upon what you know as or what you may have heard of or heard of or uh, may be familiar with known or known as Gnosticism or what you call the Gnostics. Um, but they describe the body as something horrible, disgusting, uh, you know, so low in nature, such a low vibration that they... You know, they despised it so much that they wanted to get out of it. They hated everything about it, or they didn't like, or wasn't a fan of anything which you find pleasurable in the physical body. What you find pleasurable in the physical body, uh, they kind of define as hideous and gruesome. They wanted to get out of it. They found it as a trap or trapping of the soul. So they were just trying to find out the perfect formula, the perfect soup. This was the perfect soup, but if you put the, chem the, the perfect chemistry together to create the perfect formula, you can release from it, which is why some people die and others leave the body. And there's a difference. Some people die, what we know as die, which is expire, and some people actually leave or exit the body. 
consciously. Once you know the perfect formula to do so, if you choose to do so, or want to do so, or, des or desire to do so. Um, you know, so it's not really something that you have to wait for uh, as far as timing to make it happen. You can actually make it happen at will if you choose to. If you choose to want to leave or eject or suspend or depart from the physical vehicle, you can do it when you want to do it. It doesn't have to be from sickness or old age or expiration. You can do it when you want to. That's why I said some individuals expire and others leave when they're ready from this BODY, from this vehicle, from this vehicle, from this jet or this plane. Okay. The next line and or doorway is, it is a bridge or bridging between three realities. This is what the BODY is. It is a bridge or bridging between three realities. These three realities being the unmanifested, which is what we know as thought, uh, the manifested, which is the action of the thought, and the thing which appeared from the action of the thought, which is the manifesting. So you have the unmanifested, the manifested, and the manifesting. The unmanifested is known as thought. The manifested is known as the action of that thought. And the manifesting is the thing which appeared from the action of that specific thought. And potential multi-dimensions, feelings, emotions, and thoughts. You know, um, so this is also a multi-dimensional vehicle as well. So it is a bridge or bridging between three three realities. This is what this BODY thing is. It's a bridge or bridging between three realities. And it's also um, a thing for potential multi-dimensions. Or it's multi-dimensional, basically. So you don't have to call it a BODY. You can call it a multi-dimensional thing. Um, a dimension or dimensions. Like, you have a body? No, I have dimensions. No, I am dimensions. Or you have a body? No, I am dimensions. So I'm giving these different understandings and understandings so that you can um, choose your vocabulary wisely when, once again, defining and describing your reality as clear as possible and as close as possible to your own personal understanding of this reality. Not some word that you just, everybody says and you just follow. Even look at the dictionary, make up your own language, whatever. Start to define this reality and define this reality as close as possible to your personal sacred and silent understanding of it. And then, you know, um, become that language. And, you know, share that knowledge with others if you choose to do so. Keep it to yourself. Whatever works for you. Okay. Uh, the next doorway, line and or doorway is, it is a machinery of memory and imprints. Basically, just imprints and expressions. We are physical expressions of mental impressions. So, we are physical expressions of mental impressions. You know, we act according to our mind or we animate physically according to our mind. Uh, according to what our subconscious mind has taken, you know, what the unconscious mind is, the subconscious mind has taken, is what the conscious mind acts out. And it uses limbs or extensions to animate these expressions and acting outs. Um, that we know as arms, legs, the face, the head, limbs, facial expressions, things of that nature. So this is what, once again, what this thing is. Um, you know, it's like your own personal 
it's your own personal chess piece or game piece as well. You know, you're looking for ways to understand, to create a space gap and a respectful distance between this and that, between you and this body. But you're not in a land of make-believe. You're actually using or utilizing the truths of what this reality truly is to create the to see the truth of what you truly are and to uh, continue your experience based on this primordial existence of what you truly are of what you truly are not who you are but what you are you know um and the last line in our doorway is this is your own personal customization or customizing vehicle. You customize this. You put whatever you want on it. You put piercings on it. You put tattoos on it. Do whatever you want with it. This is yours. And this is yours to do what you choose to do with it. But understand that every effect or every cause has an effect. An effect derives from the cause. So yes, you can do what you want to do with willpower and whatever you want to do in your intent with your body, but understand that certain things also uh, trickle down from that or domino effect from whatever you're doing to it. But you can do it, but just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Like right now, I can jump off this cliff, or I can jump off this terrace, but should I do it? So if I do something, you know, other things happen to transpire from that, or may transpire from that. Somebody that does that or jumps from a terrace or a roof or somewhere, they can break their bone, they can get hurt, they can die. You know, so just because you could doesn't mean that you should. Because it can have consequences. So I'm giving you different words and different understandings of defining this BODY thing or this thing that we call a body. And um you know, uh, you can start to, or begin to, or continue defining and describing this reality, your reality, according to how you see it, how it's communicating to you, and how you're experiencing it. Personally, but in principle. And my as as I am, as you all, uh, I'll see you guys next time. And of course, until then, I'll keep you in vision. One, zero.